With all the takes out there on the Apple Vision Pro, I thought I should probably throw my take in on it as well. So in this video, what we're going to be doing is just taking a look at the Apple Vision Pro. We're going to take a look at the outside of it, how it assembles, the different pieces to it. And then I'm going to pop it on and we're going to take a look at the interface. Now, I'm not going to be looking at any individual apps in this video. Maybe just a few of the Apple apps, but there are a lot of apps that are available and more are being added on a daily basis. I'm going to save that for another video. In this video, we're just going to take a look at it, get my review of it, see what I think of it, and actually take a look at how it all works. Let's take a look at the Apple Vision Pro. So this is the Apple Vision Pro. As you can see, we basically have two different pieces here. We have our battery, and then we have our headset. Now this headset actually comprises of about four or five different pieces. We'll look at that shortly. Let's first look at this battery. This battery will last about two and a half to three hours, and it is USB-C. You're going to see that when I hold it up here. We have our USB-C cable. We can charge it while we are wearing it. Also, you can plug in another battery pack to this. So you can use this battery pack along with a second one, maybe one in each pocket, and then this on your head if you needed to use it for more than two and a half to three hours and you can't plug it in. The battery plugs into the headset through this little cable here. Now this is not magnetic. The reason is, is there's no battery in this headset. So if you disconnect this, it's like unplugging it. So you really don't want to accidentally unplug it just by tripping over it or anything like that. So what you have to do is you have to twist this off and then pop it off and then it'll power it off. Now that can be a little bit of a problem because this gets caught up on different things. I have an air on chair and this get caught up when I'm wearing it in my chair on the armrest. I really didn't think that it would be too much of a problem, but it turns out to be a little bit more of a problem than I anticipated. So I have to kind of tuck this cable close to my body. I will put this in my back pocket and then I can walk around wearing this, but you do have to be careful of this cable here. So it comes into here and now we have our headset. So I mentioned that this headset is, you know, four or five different pieces, depending on if you want to call the cover a piece. And I like to think of it as four or five different pieces. If you think of it as one piece, you're going to think it's just one solid piece, which it isn't. You'll see shortly. Let's go from the back end here. We have our headset. This is the one that comes installed on it. And this will just go around the back of your head. Now this one is the least comfortable, but it also is the easiest to put on and off. The other head, head strap that comes with it is this one here. And what this one will do is go over top of your head and then it also goes behind you. It adds a little bit more support. This is the one that I will typically wear. But it's not as elegant as this one. I am, And I am trying to wear this one a little bit more. I adjust it on my head. It's getting more comfortable. My goal is to maybe just use this one exclusively. Easy to switch the headband. You're going to see that there is a yellow or an orange tab there and an orange tab here. All I have to do is just pull on it. Pulls off. I do the same thing here. And now I can pop the other one on. I'm going to leave this one on. So I just pop it back on there. And now it's ready to go. So that's one piece. The next piece that we're going to look at is this cover here. And I like to think of it as part of the headset. Why? Well, if I don't, I may leave this behind. It's more of a mental game in my head because this is glass and I certainly don't want to scratch that. So I like to keep this close and on it whenever I can. So I like to think of this as another piece to the puzzle. Now, you saw that I was actually holding it by this here. I'm going to tell you, that's a no-no. I shouldn't have done that. Why is that? It's held on with magnets. So again, I don't like to think of this as one solid or one single piece because then all of a sudden you're going to be thinking that it's just one solid headset. It isn't. Magnets. All I have to do is just pop it off and we have our headset here separated. So I was picking it up by that. If I go like this and I just shake my hand, you can see that it dropped. So you really do not want to carry it by this. Same thing with this little piece of foam here. That's magnetic as well. And 
it just pops off. So these two pieces here pop off, and now I'm looking at multiple pieces in here. And I take the cover off, there is the Apple Vision Pro. I'm not done yet. I also have readers in here. So these are held on with magnets as well. So I have these readers. They just pop on, pop on. It will recognize those readers once you first install it. It will recognize those and then put it into the reader mode or readjust all of the optics in there. If I were to take these off and then share this with someone else, share the Apple Vision Pro with someone else, the Apple Vision Pro would detect that these are not in there and it would just use the standard glass. It wouldn't make any adjustments for these readers. So it's completely automatic, which is really, really nice. This part here, when you purchase it, this is the part that they scan or they actually give you that is scanned for your head. So this part can change depending on the scan when you first purchase the Apple Vision Pro. To put it on, all you have to do is just go pop it over there, magnet. This part here also we can get different sizes. The Apple Vision Pro does come with two different sizes. This is a little thicker size. I like this a little more comfortable, but it does come with a thinner size as well. And again, very easy to change out. So now we have my Apple Vision Pro, and since I'm not using it, again, I'm holding it by this. That's a no-no, but I'm being very careful here. I'm not shaking it or anything like that. And then I'm gonna put on the cover, and now we're good. So that is the Apple Vision Pro. Now, let's take a look at some of the sensors. This device actually has, whoops, you can see that. I just pulled it apart. Still getting used to this thing, so I'm just gonna go like that. Hold it by the strap. This thing actually has six different microphones, and it has 13 cameras as long, as well as a LiDAR camera. So six microphones are in here, and then you're gonna see that we have cameras here, and there are cameras behind here, and there are cameras that track your eyes in here. And then there's a LiDAR detector on there that will also map out your room or wherever you are and figure out all the depth. So those are all the sensors for it. Now let's talk about the displays in this, which is an impressive display, or actually there's two impressive displays in here. Now when we're looking at our Apple Vision Pro, I'm just going to pop this off here. You can see it's really easy to do, although once they're on, they're locked on. It's not going to fall off of your head. But you're going to see that we have two OLEDs in here. That's what these displays are. Each eye has its own display, and they're micro OLED. Now, not only are they micro OLED, but they have a minimum refresh rate of 90 hertz. This is good. The lower the refresh rate, the more nauseating or nauseating it may get when you're wearing a headset. So you wanna have a higher refresh rate. These will go up to about 120 from what I've read, but it is a minimum of 90. On top of that, these displays themselves are pretty impressive. So when Apple unveiled the first iPhone, it was a retina display. I should say when Apple revealed the first retina display iPhone, what they were talking about there is how many pixels per inch it had and it had 326. This is very impressive. Your eye really can't tell the difference at this distance here, or when I'm looking at it, and this distance here. Once you get to about 300 PPI or pixels per inch, your eye can't really tell those pixels. It can't see those pixels. So that's why they could call it retina. 326 is above the 300 mark. Now, these displays here are not, you know, a foot, foot and a half, two feet from your eyes. They're actually like an inch away from your eyes. So 326 is not going to cover that retina look. So what they did is they packed these with 3,386 pixels per inch. Remember the iPhone, retina iPhone was originally 326. This is 3,386 pixels per inch. So when you're looking at this on your face, and even though it's really close to your eyes, you're still not going to see any of what they call that screen door effect. You're not going to see any kind of pixelization in there. 
Another stat we're going to look at is pixels per degree. Now I'm not going to explain what this is. I don't really understand what it is, but I can tell you what our eyes see with pixels per degree and then what the Apple Vision Pro does with pixels per degree. So what we see with our eyes is about 70 pixels per degree. So our goal here, or not our goal, Apple's goal here, or any VR headset manufacturer, their goal is to try to get it to as close as 70 pixels per degree as possible. Now you can go with other VR headsets. Some of them will go as low as 20 or lower, and some of them will get up into the 30 range. Really not too many that are in the mid-30s from what I understand. The Apple Vision Pro here, I fix it thinks that it may be around 34 ppd. So we're getting there, and it'll probably be a few years before we see that, or getting closer to that 70 ppd. But this is about 34 ppd. It's not bad, but when you put it on, of course, it is not going to be like your eyes. You're not going to have as clear vision as you do with your eyes. Also, the color on it. Our eyes see a lot more color than what we see on any monitor or anything like that. So with the Apple Vision Pro, what, we're, what it is doing is it's able to reproduce just under 50% of our color that we see with our eyes. So when we're looking at this, when I have this on my head and I'm looking through something and I'm looking at my house or anything like that, it looks like I'm actually looking at the house. You'll see this shortly. But what it's doing is it's using pass-through cameras on this thing. So basically there's cameras here that it's looking out on and then it's going to reproduce that on the displays here. Well, the color that it uses for that is about 50% or less than 50% of what our natural eyes see. So the colors are not going to be as bright as what we see. It's still really impressive. Don't get me wrong. Very impressive. But it's still not going to be that full gamut, color gamut. There isn't a monitor out there that can see as or display as much as our eyes can. What about connecting devices to them? Well, everything is done through Bluetooth on this. I can connect a keyboard to it, a Bluetooth keyboard to it. It does have a virtual keyboard. You'll see that when I pop it on my head. But you can hook up a regular keyboard to it. If you do a lot of typing, absolutely necessary. You can also hook up a trackpad. You can't hook up a mouse. And then the trackpad will work like a trackpad on the iPad. You're going to see a glow or and a big dot that you can float around. If you have a trackpad and an iPad, you're going to be very familiar with what it looks like on here. And then you can also hook up game controllers to it for specific games. Now, what about the speakers? Well, if we look here, you're going to see that we have a little hole there. That is a speaker, and we have one here. And they aim down at your ears. The audio quality of this is very impressive. It does use spatial, so as I turn my head, what it'll do is it'll change how the audio is. Very impressive. But when you do use these, anyone that is nearby you is also going to be able to hear it. You can hook up AirPod Pros to it. So if you want to keep all of the sound isolated, then what you'll want to do is use AirPod Pros. But it is pretty impressive at how well these speakers sound. Last thing I want to mention is repairability. iFixit did do a teardown on this, and it's really not as bad as I thought it would be. They gave it a repairability of 4 out of 10. Basically, they said that they believe that a lot of the circuit boards are not paired with each other. What that means is a circuit board, when they pair it, that circuit board will only work on that specific device, that specific serial number device. So you're not going to be able to take a circuit board out of one Apple Vision Pro and pop it into another. Well, that's not how it works with this from what they can tell. So they did give it a repairability of 4.4 .4 out of 6. 4 out of 10. Quite surprising. A lot of little pieces in here, though. When you watch the teardown, and they do have a teardown on ifixit.com, a um, lot of little pieces in here. But it's, it's, it's pretty impressive. But I was surprised at 4 out of 10. Not too bad. So that is the Apple Vision Pro. Now, let's take a look at how we pop this on our head. So pretty easy to do. Basically, what you want it to do is you want it to rest against your cheeks, and then also, you know, against your forehead here. Now, when I first got it, what I was doing it was I was just tightening it up, up onto my head really tight to hold it on there, not resting it. And I would get the red streaks here. It would get uncomfortable. 
I'm like, there's got to be a better way. So then what I did is I switched over to, took the strap off, and I switched over to this strap. Made it much better. So I would just pop this on here and this on here, and it did make it a lot better. So now when I pop it on, this goes behind my head and this goes over top, and you can't adjust them. Oops, I didn't pop that on there. Good. There we go. And now I would just pop it on, much more comfortable. But I really want to use this one. So what I did is I went to Apple's website and I actually read, how do you wear this? Pretty enlightening for me. I didn't realize that you rested. I was just tightening it against my face and you can tighten it with this here. You just turn this and it tightens against your face. That's not what you want to do. You want to rest it. And that was a game changer for me far more comfortable. I could keep this a little bit loose. I didn't have to worry about it squeezing my head. And now what I've been slowly doing is switching over to this. And my goal is to where I don't have to use this thing. And I'd like to be able to use this exclusively. So I'm figuring out how to wear this thing. And like I say, the key is let it just rest against your nose, against your cheeks here. Don't tighten it against your face there. That will give you those red bands and give you a headache. So that's an outside look at the Apple Vision Pro and some of its specs. Now let's get to the fun stuff. Let's pop this thing on my head and you're gonna see how this whole thing works. So the way that I do that is, I'm gonna use this strap here. So I leave this cover on and typically what I will do, let's go ahead and change my camera here. Typically what I will do is I will just put this over the back and you can see I'm just grabbing onto this. I do need to take my glasses off. I have readers in there, so I don't need those glasses. And I just pop it on my head, and then I just pull this forward, and the Apple Vision Pro is on. And that's basically all we have to do. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen with you. So then you're able to see what I'm seeing. So the way that I'm going to do that is through the control center on the Apple Vision Pro. I'll show you that once I start sharing my screen. So I'm gonna pinch here. I don't have to hold my hand up, but I just want you to see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to share my screen here with my iPad. I do have an iPad here, so let's go ahead and wake it up. We can use AirPlay to share what is on our screen. So that's what I'm doing. So now it's gonna share on my iPad here. And then anybody that's looking at that iPad is going to be able to see what I'm looking at. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my iPad view. Let's go ahead and do that. And now you're looking at my Apple Vision Pro. Actually, you're looking at what I am seeing through my Apple Vision Pro. So think of these as ski goggles. What you're seeing is what I'm seeing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mute this microphone here and I have these AirPods, so I'm gonna step away from this microphone. So I'm gonna use these AirPods. Quality of the audio is gonna change a little bit, but at least you're gonna hear me because I'm gonna be moving away from this. So I mute it. So now you should be able to hear me yet. Let's go ahead and double check. Yep, all right. So this is my Apple Vision Pro. I'm going to step away a little bit here. You don't want to be too close to a wall. And now, as I said, think of this as a thick pair of ski goggles. When I move around, you're seeing what I'm seeing. So there's my travel case for it. I did purchase a travel case. I keep going. There's my computers, my turntable. And if we go around this way, we have my doors for the closet. So you're seeing what I am seeing. So right now it's just a thick pair of very expensive set of ski goggles. But watch what happens when I show the apps. To do that, what we do is you press in on the digital crown. There are two buttons on here. We have a digital crown, and then we also have a side button, much like the Apple Watch. We have a digital crown and a side button. We've got those two here too. So now what I do is I just press in on the digital crown, and we can see my apps. So there are my apps. Now, what's really cool about this is when I move closer to them, you're going to see that I can actually look around them. Move my head this way. Sorry if I'm getting you a little bit dizzy here, but remember, let's go ahead and hide those. 
Right now, what you're looking at is two cameras going out. So you're going to see that it bounces around as I bounce my head around. What I am seeing here is it's rock solid. It does not do that because my eyes are moving with my head. These cameras are moving with my head. So it doesn't affect me at all. What you're seeing is the cameras moving without your head moving. So think of a camera and you shake it around like that. This is what your head is doing when you shake it around. So I'm going to try to hold my head as still as possible. But when I move around, it is rock solid me because those cameras are tied to my head. Okay, so let's go back over to my apps. So we're looking at my apps. And when I move in here, we can see, got a little too close there. We can see that I can look around them. Also, when I look at them, they can pop up. So right now I'm looking at Freeform on the far left. And as I look, I'm looking at the App Store. And when I move away from it, between Notes and the App Store, they're both popping in and out. So basically that's how you activate it, or that's how you select something. You look at it with your eyes. And then what you do is you just pinch with your fingers. Now I'm gonna hold my hands up when I open these, but you don't necessarily have to hold your hands up. You could put them by your waist. There are two sensors on this that are constantly looking down. So you don't have to look at your hand when you're doing this. But I want you to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to hold my hand up. So what we're going to do is we're first going to open up the App Store. So I look at it and I pinch. And there's my App Store. So now what I'm able to do is move this window around. I can move it further back. I can move it forward. Now I'm in a small office here. In a large office or a large room, you'd be able to do a little bit more with it. But you're going to see down at the bottom of the window, there's a white bar when I look at it. It's right down in here. There's a white bar when I look at it turns into gray when I look away. So I'm going to look at it and then I pinch and it's like I'm grabbing that window. So now I can bring it closer to me and I can move it away. I can put it on the ceiling. I can put it on the floor. I can drag it and put it on this wall here. You're going to see that it turns a little translucent when I push it through the wall. So let's bring it just ahead of my doors there and now it's no longer translucent. We can also resize these. When we do that, we look at it, and then over in the lower right-hand corner, you're going to see that there's a little white arc. And if I go to the left side, the little white arc. What I can do is I can grab that, and then I can resize it. This is how we resize a window. So we can move it around by going to the bottom bar. We can resize it by going to the right or left side. And then if we want to close it, we just look at the X, I pinch, and it'll close it. Let's go ahead and go to my apps again. And we're going to open it up. I look at my app store. There it is. I'm going to bring it over here. And once I place it here, it's going to remember that. So now what I'm able to do is move around to the front. But if I want to look at the app store, all I have to do is just go over here and I'm looking at the app store. Let's open up the settings app. This time what we're going to do is we're going to use a control center. Now you may see, I'm going to try to point it out here, there's a little green dot right there. I have to look at it. If I look away, it disappears. Little green dot. When I pinch and that green dot shows, I get my control center. And with this control center, you're going to see that I have my apps. I have my environment. I'll show you that shortly. This is a standard control center, notifications, and volume. And then if I want to stop mirroring, because I am mirroring it to my iPad here, I could do that as well. So what I have to do is just look at my apps here. And when I pinch, it opens up the app. So I can use a digital crown, or I can use that. And then, of course, you can use, you know, um, S-I-R-I-R-I. -I -I. I'm not going to say it because I don't want to turn on Siri for anyone. But you can also do that, open your applications. So here are my applications again. We can swipe to get to my different applications. All of these applications that I'm looking at here are designed for the Apple Vision Pro. If it's not designed for the Apple Vision Pro, what Apple does is it puts it into this folder 
right here can called compatible apps. So when I pinch on that, these are the iPad apps that are not compatible, or I should say it's compatible, but they're not designed for the Apple Vision Pro. So they'll open and you'll be able to use them. It just doesn't have the Apple Vision Pro. Oops, I opened up Firefox there. But it just doesn't have, that's why you have to be a little careful with your hand gestures. I accidentally pinched on Firefox as I was looking at it. Go ahead and open up my home folder again. So basically, these are all iPad apps. They'll run fine. They just don't have exclusive Apple Vision Pro features to them. So what are some of those features that they're missing? Well, I'm going to look at the X in the upper left-hand corner to close it. And if we go over to the left, you're going to see I have apps, people, environments. And with the apps, I'm looking at the apps. If I go to people, it's going to show me people. I'm not going to show you that because I have my personal contacts in here. But if we go to environments, what I'm able to do is wrap an environment around here. You've probably heard about this. So I tap on environments. Here are my environments. I'm going to go to why this is one of my favorites, but I can select it from any one of these. So I just look at it. I pinch. And now I'm looking at that environment. Now, right now, this environment is not fully, I'm not fully immersed in it. So it's not 360 degrees. We can see a little bit of my desk here. And when I go around, we can see my app store, and then we can see my office. But what I can do is go back over to that digital crown, and this time, instead of pressing it, what I do is I just turn it, and you're gonna see I have two options here. I have the volume, and then I have the environment. I just look at which one I want to adjust. So I'm going to adjust the environment. So I turn it, I look at the environment, and as I turn it up, watch what happens. My desk disappeared. I mean, it's completely gone. And when I turn around, we still have my app store there. I'm looking at Hawaii. And this is 360 degrees. So what I'm able to do is take that digital crown and adjust how much I want to be immersed. You can see that it is slowly going away as I'm turning it. And if I turn it all the way, it just disappears altogether. So typically what I will do is I will just kind of use it like this so I can still see my desk, I can see my keyboard, but I'm still kind of immersed in it, maybe a little bit more. And then if I want to adjust the volume, I look at the volume and do the same thing. Now what you can also do is just double click on the digital crown and when I double click on it, it's going to remove that environment. So I double click, I'm looking at my office, I double click again, it brings me back. So we can easily turn that off just by double clicking on that. Let's go and put a few more windows around. Right now, again, I have my app store. Let's go and open up the settings app. I'm gonna go to the digital crown. We're gonna look at my apps and we're gonna open up the settings app. There's the settings app. I take this window, I move it over here. Let's go ahead and do that again. This time what we're going to do is open up Safari, pinch and I'm looking at Safari. And again, I just take this and move it where I want. So now I have my settings app, Safari, and the app store. And we can keep doing that. And then I also have a third party clock up there and I can take that bar and move it where I want. So basically we're able to place these windows wherever we want. Now what's really cool about this is we can also pin them to different rooms. So what I'm going to do is take Safari here. I'm going to pinch when I'm looking at that bottom bar. And when I do, I can take it with me. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand up here, see if the camera will follow me. And it won't, it won't be able to follow me all the way around. But basically what I'm able to do is put this into another room. And when I do, it's going to stay in that room. So basically what I'm able to do is place these different windows in different rooms and I can walk around to them. And as I walk in those different rooms, I'm going to see all these different windows. So we can see I'm just looking around here, and I have my different windows here. Let's go ahead and sit back down here so I don't stumble into anything. Although, when you do get close to an object, watch what happens when I get close to the wall. You can see that it's starting to peek through. So I could actually walk around with this and not bump into anything. As you're getting close to something, 
you'll start to see it peek through. I move away, it disappears. Let's look at a Vision OS app. They do have some special features for them. I'm not gonna look at all the different apps, but I just wanna show you some of the few specific features of a Vision OS app. We're gonna pick on the Disney app. So I'm gonna to go to my apps and I have Disney here. I just look at it and I pinch. Now a Vision OS app typically will have the sidebar on the left. And this is where we can go into our different environments. If it supports it, not all of them support it. I can search, I can go home. All I'm doing is just looking at this bar here. And when we go down to the bottom, the two mountains, what I'm able to do is go into an environment with this app. So I'm gonna pinch. And now I have four different environments for the Disney app. HBO has their own environments. IMAX has their own environments. I'm gonna to go to Disney Theater. This is my favorite place to watch a movie. I'm a Disney fan, so I pinch. And now, go ahead and close this here. When we're looking here, we can see I'm looking at a Disney theater, or I'm sitting in a Disney theater. Now, you can see that my office is starting to peek through. What do I do? I just go to the top, and I fully immerse myself. Now, I can go 360, I'm sitting in a seat here, I'm all comfy, I have the movie there, I select what movie I want to watch, you're not gonna be able to see it, it's all DRM'd, but basically this movie will show in the back, I'm gonna move this window here, the movie will show in the back there. So it's like you're looking at or watching a movie in the Disney theater. So these are the different environments and apps will have different environments. Now, to get out of this, what I need to do is just click on the X or look at the X and then I pinch and it brings me back out. And now I'm back in the other environment. If we go over to my app store, you can see we have that sidebar there again. So that's a standard feature of a Vision OS app. Now, ironically, the Safari app doesn't have it. So not all apps follow that, but that's typically what you'll see, at least from what I've seen with Vision OS apps. Now, what about your computer? How can you see your computer? That's what everyone is touting is how you can work on your computer. Well, you can. Now, what I'm going to do is go to the control center. There's a couple different ways to do this. I'm sitting far back from my computer, but it's still close enough to the Vision OS. So when I pinch to show my control center, and then we go over to the control center, you can see that it's highlighted because I'm looking at it and I pinch, we have an option here for Mac virtual display. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at that and pinch. And you're gonna see my Mac there. If I had my MacBook Air open, you'd be able to see that MacBook Air. So what I would like to do is work on my computer. So all I have to do is just look at it and I pinch. And now, go ahead and close this. You're gonna see there is my computer. So what I'm able to do is move this around I can resize it, go to the lower right-hand corner, and I can drag, and we can see that I can make this monitor pretty big, and it is my Mac. So there's a loopback, that's how I'm getting my AirPods to go into Ecamm. There's Ecamm, which is how I'm recording it, and then we have my notes over there. Now, it looks like it may have locked up a little bit. I'm going to close this. There is a problem with sharing and showing the Mac desktop. There is a known issue for that. So when I'm sharing via my AirPlay, it does not necessarily work well with showing the Mac's desktop. But basically all I have to do is either look at my Mac and you'll see connect, but I have my microphone in the way. What I will typically do is just look at the green dot and then control center. I go over Mac Book Pro. We're gonna try this again. And there it is again. Now, when I'm using this, I can use my keyboard here and I can use my trackpad. Now, when you share your desktop like that, you are not able to actually use the Vision OS controls to control your Mac. What you need to do is use the trackpad and your keyboard. The beauty of it though is, is when you do use your trackpad, you can use the trackpad to control your other windows here.
So you can share that trackpad and that keyboard with your Vision OS. Now what happens if you don't have a keyboard? How can you type in a URL? Let's say I wanted to go to my site. Let's go ahead and move this over here. And let's make this a little bit bigger. And now what I'd like to do is go to my site. So I just look up at the URL, the search bar. And if we look, you're going to see that I have a keyboard, a virtual keyboard that shows up. And there's two ways to interact with this, well, actually three ways. What I'm able to do is tap on it. So let's just go to Dan's Tutorials, Minority Report here. Just virtually tapping on it. Or what I can do is I can look at each letter. So now what I'm going to do is just look at the R and I and A, and I'm just pinching. And I can type it in that way. The third way is by going over to the microphone here, and then I can just say. So you can dictate to it as well. And you don't have to use uh, SRIA or SRII to do that. So I can go up here. Let's go ahead and tap. And let's go over, look at it, pinch. Dan's Tutorials. And of course, it pulls up Dan's Tutorials. That's not really what I want. It's still listening to me. Let's go ahead and pinch look at it. And now it's no longer listening to me. So those are the three different ways that you can work with the keyboard. And of course, you can. This is just another window. So I can take this and move it closer, move it back further. And if I want to close it, I just look at the X, pinch, and it closes it. When you are done with the Apple Vision Pro, all you have to do is just take it off. And it, then what it does is it goes into sleep mode. So let's say I'm done with it. I'm just going to move forward here. And we're going to switch to my main camera. And what I do now is I just take my cover. This is how I do it. Pop it on there. Slide it off. And now what I'm doing is putting the Apple Vision Pro to sleep. And that's basically all we have to do. Let's go ahead and turn this microphone back on. Probably sounds a little bit better there. But that's a tour of, let's go ahead and put my glasses on here. That's a tour of the Apple Vision Pro. So now it is sleeping. We never really power it down like the iPhone. Do We don't really power it down, although we can. There is a way that you can power it down the slide to power off or actually pinch and slide it over. You can do that. But typically, you don't have to do that. You just pop it off, and then you're ready to go. So that's the Apple Vision Pro. What's my take on it? Well, it's an amazing piece of technology, number one. There's a lot that is going on with that thing. Now, a lot of people will say it's pricey, but the Mac was pricey, too, when it first came out. In today's dollars, it would be about $7,000, maybe $7,500 to purchase a Mac. Did it do much? Not really. A lot of people joked about that graphical user interface, which now every computer, including Windows computer, runs on. So it did change the world. When it first came out, mm, not so much. But give it a few years, it changed the world. And I kind of feel the same thing with this. It's pricey, $3,500 minimum. You're looking at $4,000 with a case. And there's not a whole lot that it can do yet. The developers just got their hands on it, and I think you're going to see a lot more apps come out in the next few months that are really going to make this thing shine. Now, what Apple has to do outside of the developers, what Apple has to do is their homework as well, but I believe that they know this. Obviously, make it lighter. Make the battery last longer. Get rid of this tethered cord. There's some things that they need to do as well, and of course, bring the price down. But I think that they will. From what I understand, the glass in this thing, the OLEDs that I mentioned at the beginning, those are very expensive. And once they get that cost down, it can dramatically bring the cost of this thing down. And again, make this thing smaller, lighter. And I think what you're going to have there is a new computing device that is really quite something. So it's going to take a little bit. This is a first gen. I think of the Mac in the first gen didn't do a lot, cost a lot of people a lot of money. Same thing here. But I do believe that it is going to change how we work with our computing devices on a regular basis. So that is the Apple Vision Pro.